Remember Street Fighter? It's that video game you played as a kid on the Super Nintendo that disappeared. Except that actually it didn't. Capcom, the company that owns it, kept making Street Fighter games and if you win a big tournament at the end of the year you get $250,000. Yeah, that's more than most people make in about 5 years. The current game is Street Fighter V and I got into it casually about 3 years ago and if you have a PS Plus subscription, you can play it for free. Now I just want to be clear at the start, I'm no wizard at this game. I'm silver rank which is pretty much near the bottom and to be honest, I got there by beating bots that people leave running because... I don't know, they're collecting fight money to buy costumes or something. I'm Nihongo Gamer, and here are 5 things that I wish I had known before I started playing Street Fighter V. Number 5. Attack Less Fighting games can be complicated, but the basic premise is incredibly simple. Hit the other player more than they hit you. Simple, right? All you gotta do is press your attack button more than the other person. Except that what you don't realize is that every time you punch, kick, or throw a fireball, there's one thing you can't do. Block. Blocking or jumping over stuff is how you avoid getting killed, so when you press buttons to attack, you're wide open. So while you do have to attack enough that you don't lose when the timer reaches zero, try to pick your moments carefully. Number 4. Don't double tap yet. Double tapping is a useful little technique that makes hard combos a little easier because you get two chances to press the button at the right time. Just flick two fingers like this and you get two inputs. But timing in SF5 is already quite accommodating and you can end up using double taps to become super lazy to the point that without it you have no idea what the actual correct timing is. Now you might be thinking, if it makes it easier, why not do it? Well, eventually, you'll find the right times to use it, but as a beginner I was using double tapping to make the timing easier on this back heavy punch, but I realised that it was giving me less time to do the dragon punch after it. When I tried the combo without double tapping, I had more time to cleanly input the dragon punch, but I realised I never really learned the correct timing for the back heavy punch, and so I dropped this combo a lot. Moral of the story is, don't be like me, don't double tap, yet. You might want to do it eventually, but at the start, just learn the proper timing. You'll thank yourself later. Number 3. If you lose, play until you win. I'm just kidding. Playing until you win feels good, but hear me out. What I wish I had done more when I started was turn a loss into a winning situation. People play fighting games mostly online these days. That means you can finish work or school, eat dinner, play some Street Fighter, and then go to bed. The real fun in fighting games is when you feel like you've made progress, and SF5's way of motivating you is to give you league points in ranked battle mode. So you play a few matches, win some points, and you level up to higher ranks, but as you do, the matchmaking system gives you stronger opponents. Now if you want to beat these opponents, you're gonna have to get stronger, but chances are you're gonna lose at some point and have to come back later when you've leveled up. But losing sucks, so you'll probably try to play until you win, and so you play again and again and again, and then finally at 2 in the morning you get that glorious win. But you lost all your league points, and it turns out you won because the matchmaking system felt sorry for you and gave you a player much weaker than you. If, like me, you have to wake up in the morning and go to work, you can't keep playing games until 2am, so here's what you should do instead. If you lose your final match and you don't want to end the night on a loss, make sure you learn something. Go to the main menu, open up your fighter profile, click watch this replay, and just find at least one thing you didn't know before, or one thing you could have done better. Sometimes you won't know what was wrong and maybe you just made a guess that didn't work out, and that's fine too. But in most cases you will find at least one thing that you can learn and you can actually say to your opponent, hey, thanks for beating me. I learned something and you won't get me with that next time. Number 2. Play on PC. Listen, you can totally play this game on PS4, but everything loads slowly and I could never be bothered to load the menus, watch my replays, boot up training mode, test situations, and all the other stuff. I still play on PS4 when I'm live streaming, but off camera, I much prefer PC just because I can get more done in less time and I'm less likely to come up with an excuse like, oh I can't be bothered to test this right now because booting into training mode is going to take forever, even though it might only take a few seconds. First world problems. Number one. It's actually two games. Learn both. If you've ever played a musical instrument or learned to draw a picture, you'll know that some stuff is boring and only seems to exist to get in the way of having fun. Things like learning to play a scale supposedly makes difficult music sound cleaner and learning anatomy will supposedly make your characters look more accurate. But anyone who has persevered to the point of putting on concerts or drawing comics professionally knows that accepting the boring stuff is not only important, but actually half the fun. Digging deeper into how a fighting game works is no different. In SF5 you can get pretty far with what's known as fundamentals. 
punching at the right time, conditioning your opponent to jump and then punishing them for it, pushing your opponent into the corner and then applying pressure and releasing a damaging combo. This stuff is fun and a lot of it carries over to other games too, not just fighting games but any competitive activity. But this is only half the game and the other half is knowledge. Actually inputs and execution are another half but that's too many halves so I'm leaving it out for now. Fundamentals can take you pretty far but at some point you're probably going to lose to someone who knows more about SF5 than you do. It may sound scary, but knowledge, it turns out, is not only important, but also a key part of what makes the game more satisfying to play. In a way, it's like how scales unlock the power to improvise in a piece of jazz or make difficult passages easier to memorize, or how learning anatomy doesn't just make your drawings more accurate, but gives you the foundation to begin inventing your own anatomy with incredible Hulk-like proportions that have just enough grounding in reality that your visual designs can be fantastical, yet immediate and relatable. So buy a cheap notepad and write stuff down. It doesn't have to be super organized, simply writing it down will help you remember it. Stuff like this move is easy to punish, or that situation can be escaped with a neutral jump. Stuff like that. Bonus. Take the game with you. As a little extra, I thought I'd share this comment that was left on a recent video I made about learning frame data in SF5. I learned how to read frame data very early on and it has been rewarding. It allows you to think about the game without even being near it. Time is short and we're all very busy, but this is the Street Fighter that most people are playing today, and it turns out you can get better at it while waiting at the dentist's office. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to know what you think, so please comment below. Do you agree, disagree, or have anything to add? These five points aren't really advice, especially as I'm no pro at SF5, but it's definitely stuff I wish I'd known when I started. Would have saved me a whole lot of time. I'm regularly streaming on Twitch, so definitely check the link below if you want to come and chat live while we're playing games, and hang out on the Discord as well, where we can talk about all things games, art, and Japan related. That's all for now, and I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.